hi 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 friends welcome to joy Fido international um today we have something exciting for you as always my name is joy Fido and welcome on board okay so what's really interesting that i want to share with you today um let's go back a, just a little bit we did a video recently uh, where we talked about um contribute to your community or give to your community invest in your community and the response was quite good um people making comments and all that now what happens is sometimes when i finish a video i just move on and go on to the next thing and i listen back as well and some of the things that really came out were the things i talked about um africa in particular <clears throat> so I want to really push us further down the line because what it is is we are all on a journey all of us as humans we are on a journey and you remember I did the 40 day journey where um, we we're trying to see what it is that's our mission on earth and you know the title was what on earth am I here for and I'm beginning to to get that natural vibe that there's there's something that I'm really or I've been chasing on this journey that I'm beginning to find out and you know what what I call our slogan for Jefito International is let's start thinking because I think what's been happening is we haven't been thinking and this is especially those of us Africans we haven't been thinking black people generally we haven't been thinking africans in particular we haven't been thinking so today's title is um i i call it stop stealing africa's wealth stop stealing africa's wealth now there's so much going on and i have so much to show you today because it's like when you go on this journey to search for something you know when the bible says um, seek and you shall find the minute you start seeking you will find you will find because the answers are out there there's so much out there that we are ignorant of and if you start searching you start seeking the answers start to sit in your face and the reason i'm beginning to find so much more answers again is because i went on this course or i am on this course and part of what you do is you take on assignments you have to write about this and you write about that and you do so much research and in in the process of researching i've just been coming across things that i have been searching ordinarily without finding answers and now it's coming a lot lot more easier to me so this journey of trying to find out why we work so hard and nothing comes out of it or um why 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 are the why are the poor just continuing to be poorer and and the rich are continuing to be richer and it's like where does this end why why do we keep putting in all the effort we can put in and nothing shows now for me in particular yes I, I would naturally say I am grateful to God for all the wonderful things he's done for me and for all the experiences and for all the knowledge I seek and I find and you know for you know I could I could up and go anywhere as I please um, those those facilities are there for me but it's like you want to go beyond that you want to you want to add a lot more because for my kind of person why i keep searching and seeking is like i cannot see myself as a voice for the voiceless you know i'm that kind of powerhouse where i know that if i know something i will share it i have that capability to you know research these things and find the answers i have access to finding these resources so there are people out there who may who may equally want to ask 
or want to seek this question or answers to these questions but they don't have that that ability to do it okay example say you're in nigeria or most of african countries and you don't have access to electricity that is something that could hinder your ability to do the things you may want to do and i live in this country now where i have this access to electricity so i can i can go online and search whatever i want to search when i want to search it so when i have that capability to do that i can find these things and then i share it with people who don't have such access or i could say i want to buy a book and i get it very easily because i have access to amazon and i can do that so that's why it bothers me so much when i find these things and i have to and i have to share it or i i come across such information that's so touching and it really hurts and it's like i have to let this out so when this hits me i just have to come and sit down and talk now if i am in this situation where i am having access to these things and i'm finding out these things and i'm working so hard and i'm not seeing any results then what what's going to happen to people out there who don't have access to these things or who don't even know where to search for them or it's like um what i was hoping that could happen is when i do find answers to these things i wouldn't share it and then we could collectively be able to solve the issues we struggle with in life but this is where it's beginning to this understanding is beginning to break down because it's like i'm i'm searching for these things and i'm finding these answers and it's like this hill is getting higher and higher you know it's like an uphill tax because i've i've tried everything i can think of trying all i'm trying to achieve is get a better life for myself support people out there who need help and then we can all have a basic happy lifestyle but that's getting difficult so hence this title stop stealing africa's wealth because what i found out um in that last video i showed quite a lot of books which i'm going to show again if this is your first time of watching this i mean there's there's a bible passage i have my bible right here there's a Bible passage that really explains this. Because you know what I tend to do when when I'm trying to understand something, I find I try to find the answer in the Bible as well. And I try to connect it. And this is um the book of Ecclesiastes, and it's um chapter 10, um, verse 7. Ecclesiastes 10, 7, verse 7. And it says, I have seen servants upon horses. This is one of those passages that I heard about a long time ago and I think I lost it. I'm thinking, where did I hear that? And I just typed it on Google and it came up. I have seen servants upon horses and princes walking as servants upon the earth. I have seen servants riding. This is another version of the Bible. It says, I have seen servants riding on horseback like princes. So servants are riding on horsebacks. You know how a prince will ride on a horseback. But in this scenario, servants are riding on horseback as if they are princes. While the princes are the ones who are working as slaves. So when I, when I read this, I had to think about this. What does this mean? Now the answer has been coming out very clearly to me. So last time i also showed this this book it is a book is a pdf book online which i said and uh, people have been asking so i'm more than happy to email it to you if you send me your email my email is joyfido at googlemail.com joyfido at googlemail.com because i know i will remember this at the end of the video so it says the new colonialism the new colonialism and it's um, by a man called Mark, Mark Curtis. And he did this thing with a group called War on Want. I'll explain. Uh, let me just quickly read what War on Want is about. War on Want says they are fighting against the root causes of poverty and human rights violation as part of the worldwide movement 
for global justice. And they're working in partnership with grassroots social movements, trade unions, and workers, uh, workers' organization to empower people to fight for their rights. So this organization is trying to support people to fight for their rights. Um, they are running hard-hitting popular campaigns against the root causes of poverty. Remember what I was talking about, poverty um, and human rights violations. This is happening across the world. Um, mobilizing support and building alliances for political action in support of human rights, especially workers' rights. Uh, raising public awareness of the root causes of poverty. So I think this is one of the one of the journey I'm taking on raising public awareness for people to know what is going on because it's like most of us live in ignorance and this is what I'm saying that the minute you start searching you'll find answers and we live in ignorance we we struggle and struggle and struggle and then it ends up nowhere you know there's that title of a movie that says um I think it was 50 cent that did that movie uh, 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 die trying, um, uh, uh, work hard, something about working hard or die trying. No, get rich or die trying. So it's like we keep chasing and chasing and chasing and then we end up nowhere and our life is done. So this raising public awareness of the root causes of poverty, uh, inequality and injustice. These are the things that really get to me. I hate injustice. I hate inequality for reasons God did not make any one human being better than the other. We are all the same. But here on this earth, a few people choose not to allow other people to rise. A few people choose to sit on other people. And this is what this war on want is fighting against. I'm going to find out about them, but the only reason I haven't you know, gone looking for them is because right now I'm still very busy with things I'm doing, but this document is there, it's online. And so, uh, raising public awareness of the root causes of poverty, inequality and injustice, and empowering people to take action for change. So, if you are in a position to find such information, what would you do? Sit down, do nothing? We have children growing up. We, we, we work so hard. Families are breaking up because of poverty, because of lack. Husbands and wives are fighting every day, they lack. And, and, and you are thinking the reason this is happening because my husband did this, my wife did that. No, there are bigger reasons behind it. This, this thing touches my soul because this, happening, this is happening in my village. Recently, I, I know I've done videos where I explained my brother-in-law was was assassinated in his, in his own house for reasons like this. I mean, Ken Sariwa, if you know him at the Ogoni course, was killed for reasons like this with nine other people. So when, when things like this come to your core, come to your fore, and you begin to see these things, you begin to add two and two together. So that Bible passage that says, I have seen servants riding on horses, and then princes walking. This explains it. Now, this particular document, this new colonialism, let me read a bit more about what he tries to talk about. He says, the continent of Africa is today facing new colonialism, a colonial invasion, no less devastating in scale and impact than that which it suffered during the 19th century. As before, the new colonialism is driven by a determination to plunder the natural resources of Africa, especially its strategic energy and mineral resources. At the forefront of this scramble for Africa are British companies, actively aided and abetted by the UK government. And it goes further to explain that 101 companies listed on the London Stock Exchange, most of them British, have mining operations in 37 sub-Saharan African countries, and they collectively control over $1 trillion. UK government has used its powers and influence to ensure that British mining uh, companies have access to Africa's raw materials, and this was the case during the colonial period and it's still the case today. 
so do you see where we're coming from these people the report exposes the long-term involvement of the british government whatever this government is they are there causing mayhem and it says in one in one breath they will claim they're sending aid to africa then they will tell you they're sending a foreign investment then they will tell you they are giving you loans but they're actually coming there and taking away everything you have and it is it also shows mining operations of british companies being associated with the killings with the killings in or near mine areas unfair and often forced resettlement uh, resettlement programs labor rights and abuses so do you see where this is going do you see where this is going and th this has, these are the things they are taking um this 101 company is now controlled and identified um over one trillion dollars water resources in africa in just five commodities and they are gold oil diamonds coal platinum just five just five this is just all they, they they've gone into detail to talk about not to talk about this so many more things that they have not listed in this thing and this is what is going on in africa meanwhile africa as far as i know as far as you know the minute you hear africa poverty the minute you hear africa starving children the minute you hear africa there's no drinking water there is no day i don't see on tv come and donate one pound for the children who are starving in africa come and give to africa africa is so poor but this is the same continent that's given over trillions of dollars worth of natural resources how unfair is this how unfair is this the same africans are, are the ones who are you know they, they, they've they've done it in such a way that every african wants to run away from their country every african is looking for the where where to get that visa everybody who is running to some whatever visa country no matter how remote that country looks like we want to hop into that plane and go there we're so desperate to get out i watched a video the other day and this man was questioning it was it was about Gandhi's uh, monument being erected in University of Ghana, where that's the only place I know that does African history. Again, I'm going to contact them because I want to know. There's so much I want to know. I'm 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 curious about why Africa has been put in this state. I mean, it's one thing to have gone there and exploited the people and done all this colonialism and sharing the whole continent into whatever quantity you liked and, you know, taking this part and taking that part. But even as at today, and then you give this impression of this poverty-stricken continent when you are the one creating the poverty, that is just beyond my understanding. I cannot understand this. To the point that the people have just been killed for the sake of nothing. You may say to me, for the sake of money. But this is what the Bible is saying here. I have seen princes riding, I mean, uh, uh, um, uh, servants riding on horses. So these servants who don't own these things, come around and ride on horses, take away from Africa, while Africans who own these things are the ones who are poverty stricken. We are the ones who are working. We are the ones who are desperate. Even when we've managed to get into that plane and cross over and come over to whichever country that is, in America, African bloods are crying on the streets. In the UK, African bloods are crying. Because every day you hear of stabbings in London of young black children because of lack, because there are no jobs for them. Because when, when they finish whatever school they go to, which again, I've shown this book about this miseducation. Because they lie to you and say they're educating you. But what they do is they don't give you enough for you to know what to do with your education. They don't give you enough for you to be independent. 
they just give you enough to make you think you know something but you know nothing because at the back of it all they go to africa and they pull away causing so much environmental devastation in that continent i remember when obama got into power and uh, uh, bp tried to cause all that trouble in america bp was charged so much money but these people go to Africa and cause so much mayhem. Right now, there's this thing going on in, you know, Goniland in Nigeria where they claim they're going to do cleanup. And it's causing more problems than even the cleanup they're trying to do. Same countries from these same Western worlds. So why, why this unfairness? Why? Because the blood that flows through Africans is still no more blood. So why do you organize and have these people killed for the sake of of money and then you think it is not enough for you to care for them i mean i could handle it if you come over to africa and you say you sit with the people and say let's stop this is what you have this is what i have i have the capability to mine your natural resources but you have the natural resources let's partner let's meet up somewhere when this thing is out we will share it in this format you have this part i have this part i will create employment i will support your people i will put the infrastructures in place no i i i just want to take everything away pull out everything from under you it's like pulling rock away from your feet so you can fall down when you're falling down then your children will be desperate and they will say they want to come over to where i live and when they come over i'm going to frustrate them i'm going to deal with them and that's when they even survive the high sea the mediterranean sea if you listen to the news every day african blood are crying dying in that sea trying to rush over to europe and when that boat is able to cross whatever they get to europe and then italy throws them to spain and spain throws them back to italy and italy throws them to uk and uk throws them to france and and human beings are now being chopped around like they're not humans and then you look underneath all of that they have come to your continent and they've taken everything you own and now they have these children have come to you to say can you give me some part of what you've taken away from me and no let's kick you around and let's throw bananas at you in a football ground when the black child maybe has managed and gone through the racism and everything they could handle to get on that international football pitch they start throwing bananas at them how much humiliation should africans have to deal with because while everyone's out there crying animal rights the, 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 the environmental rights and all of the rights they can think about what about african human beings rights what about that what about africa's rights because this is just a bit too much to take on these are the things causing the poverty in africa it is the same people and if you think that was bad enough, then I got this book, The Hidden Wealth of Nations. And this, this definitely takes the peace. This definitely finally makes you really think, which is let's start thinking. This book is about the tax havens of the world. We are talking trillions. The amount of money that is being siphoned from countries and countries and countries and hidden away in those countries that don't that 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 are, that are happy to hide it. And the man who's explaining this one, Gabriel Zuckman, and he's explaining that from African countries alone, we're looking at 30% of their money or the money that they've been able to siphon away in tax havens and he's talking he says in the middle east is about 50 percent and uh, europe i think is about 20 percent so he broke it down into percentages and he's like these are the extremely wealthy extremely wealthy people who obviously don't want to pay tax in their countries 
at least this is in the western western world is about paying tax but as for the african leaders all they do is just take the money and go and hide it away this is what this hidden wealth of nations so the money that belongs to the country that could have been used to create infrastructure create jobs help the people is now being cut away again but that's the question when these people die do they die with this money do they die with the money because we had that scenario where this uh, nigerian leader the one who killed cancer uh, uh, sanya bacha when he died all the money he stole and put in swiss banks were left there because no one could access it the government couldn't access it what is the point of taking money and hiding when your people are starving and hungry and desperate and causing mayhem and innocent people are just being killed for the sake of it because now you've allowed i was i was reading i was reading this miseducation of the negro and this one explains something he said he said what we do is most of these countries are, they're planning for their children's future um they 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 they, they put things in place yes we're not even talking about this tax haven or tax dodgers and fraudsters. I'm talking about regular countries. They sit down, they plan for their children's future. African countries don't do that. So the, the typical child goes to this miseducation system where you learn nothing. Because if you were properly educated, if you were properly informed, you will come out with some knowledge, with some skill that you can work with, that you can think and say, this is what I want to do with the knowledge I have now. No, the, the knowledge is so mixed up and so messed up that you really can't do anything. So you are waiting for someone to employ you. So you get employed or there is no job, clearly, in the case of Africa. And then what do you think happens? Of course, these people get so desperate that anybody offers them anything they will take it and do whatever they are asked to do and then you know what the african politicians will do they wait until the election period then they start employing these boys who have been left unemployed for so long and they start arming them with ammunition of course sent by the their western masters and so they, they go and cause mayhem they go and cause confusion and all these wars that you're seeing in African countries, because then I ask myself every day, why is it that there are no wars in Western countries? And yet it's only Africa where there are wars constantly. Is it that we don't understand ourselves or is it that we, we just enjoy killing each other? This is what's causing it. Because they want to just come and take everything you own and they know that if they just come and take and, and there's no confusion going on um maybe you will notice if if you people are in such harmony and you understand each other maybe you query it maybe you wake up and say but what is going on so you know what we know what to do let's pay a few hands once we paid a few people then the other ones will get angry and when they're angry they will not start questioning the ones who've been paid and then they will start fighting and then they will start killing each other so when they're killing each other we are busy taking their natural resources away and nobody's any wiser do you see what's going on so my 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 take right now is could you western world please stop stealing africa's wealth could you just please stop doing it could you just give africa some peace of mind it's taken centuries for you to do what you've been doing you've emotionally damaged africans you've mentally damaged africans you've physically damaged africans you've you've made africans completely dependent on you because now every african the minute they hear europe they're excited and they don't want to see anything about their country. The, you've, you've made Africa not even know that they had a history. Because now you, the, the image everybody has or have about Africa is there, there is no history. There is no knowledge. They're ignorant. They're starving. They're hungry. They're desperate. So everything negative you can think about, only Africa 
is where you can think. To the point now, we have China taking over to, we have India fighting together. What country is not trying to chase Africa? And one of the things this video I saw was talking about is any country that has Africa in its pocket has power. Can you believe that? So the power is in Africa and yet Africans don't count. Because I saw a video recently where this was supposedly in China and they had a like a museum and all they are showing were black people you know so they, they would put an image of a black person and they would put an image of an animal trying to compare an African person to an animal but that's the same continent where you are going right now to put your, yourself in every continent, country in Africa and try to steal as usual like your counterparts have been doing. You know, so it's like, what sense does this make? Destroy them physically, emotionally, mentally, and, and, then, and then they still take everything they own. What is the plan? I don't know what the plan is. Obliterate the continent? Uh, clean it out of the surface of the earth I don't get it so this is the time for Africans to wake up if you are African and you are watching this video you need to know what is going on and that's the, that's the awareness that I am trying to bring across because all these books that I am going to show you I am going to sit down and read them and I am going to be getting the message across these are people who have taken their time to recite this information these are not information I brought up. I'm just falling up. I mean, I'm coming across them. And because I come across them, like I said, I, I like to share what I know. I cannot sleep without sharing this type of information out there. People who have written these books, that's the message they're trying to get across as well. To make people aware of what is going on. So, especially with this war of one on one people, please email me and I will send you this information and I would definitely recommend to get in touch with them and let's all put our hands together and know what we can do to help our people because this is a problem it is a problem I have children and my children are looking my, my oldest daughter is looking for jobs and got so frustrated she had enough she's going back to school why can't we be in that position where we get what we want I, I went to an event once and this man said, if everybody, if the wealth of the world was shared equally across the number of people in the world, everybody would be a millionaire. Is that so hard for people to handle? That we have to frustrate everybody else in order for us to feel on top of the world. You know, I don't care if they want to get their wealth from anywhere else, which they try, but this lies, this hidden wealth going around on the net and pretending you're not there while well, you're there and then you turn it said to tell the world how desperate how poor how sad but you are actually that's where you're making your money from that is ridiculous and if you're an african and this doesn't bother you then i don't know what future you have for your children and your great-grandchildren and your Un unborn generations to come because if i can see this now i don't know what's going to happen tomorrow so I think seriously, it is time we put our act together and start thinking and start planning what we can do to save our continent. So I'm going, I'm definitely, um, should I leave it here? Okay, I did say I'll show you some of the books. So I'll show you, um, we'll put copies of the books in here. Um, But what's going to happen is, as, as I start reading them and it makes sense. Okay, so I'll just show you some of the books and it's up to you to start um, educating yourself, getting informed about what's going on. And some of these books will just be carrying on in most of the videos that I'll be doing, working on, um, on this topic. So this one is The Hidden Wealth of Nations by Gabriel Zuckman. Um, when the world was black, the untold history of the world's first civilization, and this is um, I can see the author, but there it is. Interestingly, at the back, he says this book will change the way you see the world. That now I'm looking forward to that. 
um this is another interesting one i started reading and i stopped because again it was hurting me breaking my heart africa betrayed by george ayite but i'll come back to reading that again later um because this miseducation has really really opened my mind here brainwashed challenging the myths of black inferiority by tom Boren. Um, web of deceit Britain's re-role in the world Mark Cortes Why Nations Fail The Origins of Power Prosperity and Poverty This is sounding exactly like um, Hidden Wealth of Nations So again I'll definitely be looking at that um, Waging the War on Want 50 years of campaigning against world world poverty. Um, this is definitely the war on want group that I was talking about. It's worth knowing about them. Um, on People by Mark Curtis. The Great Deception, Anglo-American Power and World Order. Again, Mark Curtis. How Europe Underdeveloped Africa, Walter Rodney. The Destruction of Black Civilization by Chance Chancellor William. Um, this is an interesting one. <laughs> I always like this topic, Mansa Musa and the Empire of Mali. Again, this is a bit of African history, and this Masa Musa clearly was the richest man of his time. He had so much gold, apparently all the gold you see in Saudi Arabia came from him. Africa Rising, how 900 million African consumers offer more than you think. VJ Mahajan. So these are just some of the books for now. Um, I showed you the, the new colonialism. That one is just a PDF, which when you email me, I'll send it to you. But you see, these are these are just topics like this. You just know what the content is going to be, but it's what looking into detail and seeing what you can do about it. But this just explains why um, why servants are the ones riding on horses, while while the princes are the ones walking. Because we need to know that our our poverty is not anything that we created. It's not something that God created. It's something that's been deliberately forced on Africans. And is now up to us to do something about it. So I'm going to leave it on that topic here today. Um, thank you so much for watching. Please share this video with your friends. It's really important we start to keep ourselves really informed about what's going on in our community. Um, give us a thumbs up if you liked it. Uh, I've said share it with your friends, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you so much and stay blessed.